Hey guys, it's Vampire Mike from Sega CD Universe, and I wanted to just do a quick video showing off some stuff I got recently, um, all for the Xbox One actually, so if you're not an Xbox One guy, I'd probably say don't bother. Um, so here we go, I'm going to talk about a couple games I got and what I've been playing as well. So since this is kind of boring, um, digitally I got Battlefield 1, uh, a friend of mine had uh, an extra code for the game, so he gave that to me. I have yet to try it, but it looks kind of interesting. I knew people um, really wanted to play that one when they had heard about it, but it was only in like some certain kind of package. So uh, a few of my friends have it. I'll eventually check it out. Um, here's what I picked up. I got uh, Terraria. This is a... Um, I had this at one point maybe a year or two ago, probably about a year ago, and uh, I got it for like 10 bucks from GameStop, brand new, and... I couldn't get into it. I, I didn't really give it a chance. I ended up just messing around for a little while and stopping. I'm not a big crafting guy. When they make crafting like a big, big part of a game, I don't usually get into it, which is why I'm like not a Minecraft fan or um, what's that other one? Like Seven Days to Die. Like anytime you really have to start like gathering resources and crafting, I don't really like it. I found it now because I really wanted to give it another shot. I like. I always like the kind of the 8-bit looking graphics they did and stuff, and I've heard such great things. So I went on eBay and picked this up for, I think it was $9. Um, I'm enjoying it. I played online with some guys. They gave me some good equipment. I'm much better than I probably should be at this point. You know, and I like how you can sort of go anywhere and explore and find things. So it sort of has that kind of, I don't want to use the, the term like, or the game reference, Steam World Dig too much, but sort of going around and exploring underground uh, not sure what you're going to find and stuff like that. So that's cool. I like that you can build these little houses for people and then they change the game too, depending on what they can sell you and stuff. So it's uh, it's a pretty good game. I like it and I would say it's worth the 10 bucks or $9. Um, I picked this up for Beth for her birthday this week, but I have, uh, I'm hoping she likes it. So uh, Lego Worlds, this was on sale at GameStop for $19.99 recently. It came out maybe a month ago, and then they had some kind of sale, and um, it looks cool, it looks like a mixture between the Lego games and Minecraft, I know they say there are there are some issues in regards to the local co-op, I believe, um, being a, like kind of uh, stuttery because there's so much going on at once with two people, but hopefully she likes it, I do, uh, I have a great friend at GameStop, so if for some reason she like despises it, I could most likely return it and get something else, but I'll see. It's um, It looks cute nonetheless. So hopefully she gets into that. I also picked this up. Stardew Valley, the collector's edition. Um, this is, uh, as you can see, I've been like kind of this retro looking type of, of game. This is like a, a Harvest Moon sort of game. I haven't played this yet, but I've watched a bunch of reviews. And it gets rave reviews everywhere. Um, you pretty much farm and meet people and have to give them gifts and do things in your your farm and then um i guess every morning you have to come up get up and do your errands but then you sort of like make relationships you go out and adventure and you find different items it's sort of like terraria in a way but this looks kind of more my style in terms of the interaction between the people seems to be pretty big the way i've watched videos and seen it described it almost reminds me a tiny tiny bit of Persona 4, where you have those, like, relationships you have to make with people, and that looked cool to me, and I like the kind of 16-bit graphics that they that they show. Uh, this one comes with the Pelican Town map, a mini guidebook, and soundtrack. This is currently $29.99 at GameStop, and uh, you can probably wait, and it'll probably go down, but it's been on Xbox for a while in terms of digitally, but again, I'm not really a digital guy. Um, I also picked up Has Been Heroes. Um, I would assume most people knew I picked this up because they saw the review I did, the mini review impressions video. This is a roguelike um, strategy lane-based game where you have to move around the lanes. Watch my other video and you'll get a better description, but move around the lanes and fight people, knock down their stamina bar, and then attack them. But there's a lot of strategy involved because you have to switch lanes the whole time and it like pauses the game for you. Um, there's lots of spells and items you can get, 
Anytime you lose a run, you get more stuff that you can unlock in the next game. Or if you win a run, you get a ton of stuff and like new characters and things. It's really great. It's $19.99 at GameStop, but it's very, very difficult. And once one character dies, the game ends, there's no save, you start completely over. So keep that in mind. It's not like something that you'll play and like kind of like have a fun time. It's it's difficult and uh, you really have to learn the the methods of the game, but I think it's a great buy for 20 bucks. It's an awesome game. I also picked this up, which you guys have probably seen my review and um, unboxing video. Deformers on the Xbox One. Uh, as I said, this is a GameStop published game from the company Game Trust. It's pretty bad. It's 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 okay. It's not like horrible. Like oh my god, this game is terrible. But it's very simplistic. Um, you pretty much just roll around on a, on a map and knock people off the edge. You can shoot them. Um, you can unlock different skins for your characters and pick different abilities your characters have. Like they can be better at defense or better at uh, shooting or better at ramming into people and whatnot. As I said in my review, the if you're playing with two people on the same machine but online, the game is online only, which I think is bad because if it... If that service or the people stop playing online, what are you going to do with this game? Nothing. And this isn't going to last forever. This isn't The Division or Destiny or Elder Scrolls Online, which has these vast worlds. This is an arena-based Marble Madness type game, knocking people off of an edge. Do you really think that these people are going to be around playing this for like a year? No way. So this is like 40 bucks a GameStop with a collector's edition. And right now it's half off with a pro rewards pro rewards card, um, which is fifteen. To I still wouldn't bother. I'd say if it's like ten or under, and you really find this interesting, but watch some reviews, check out my gameplay footage I put up. It's cute, but it's really simplistic. And my friend was getting really frustrated. My friend Eric and we kind of played a couple games. And we were like, "That's it, we're done." So this is probably going back to GameStop if I can return this because. It's just not for the price, and, and especially the special edition, the, the figures weren't made well. Um, not that I really needed them, but uh, yeah, it's it's not something that I wish I picked up. It's eh. And finally, I picked this up. This is Torments, Tide of Numera. Uh, excuse me, Numenera. I always do that. And uh, this is a turn-based strategy RPG, sort of like... Uh, Fallout 1 and 2, uh, Divinity, Original Sin, Wasteland, those are the games I'd probably say it's most comparable to, and I love those games, so it's really great, it's in this dark, really strange fantasy, you know, sci-fi world, um, sort of has a medieval mixture to it, but weirder, I think what this is, is it's a spiritual sequel to Planescape Torment on the PC from like, what, 15 or so years ago? It's, um, it's however, not the same world, I, I don't think, because they said Planescape Torment, I think, was in the D&D &D series, and this is in a, a whole new series called Numenera, or Tides of Numenera. And uh, the main gist of the game is you can kind of sway the tides of things. I don't know if it's just a personal tide or if it's a tide of the world. I'm not, I haven't grasped everything yet. There's a lot of definitions. There's a lot of um, dialogue. But anyway, the tides are like, if you talk to someone, you can answer them in different ways. Uh, they give you lots of options in terms of like getting nasty with them, being, um, you know, agreeing with them, whatever. And the tides change depending on what you do. I'm not sure exactly how that affects things, but this is the day one edition, which is the only thing I've seen out so far. It's like $41 right now, which is a weird price on sale on uh, GameStop. And uh, it was recently $24 at Best Buy with the Gamers Club. I picked this up from the UK for $23 on eBay. And eBay had sent me a $15 gift uh, gift card, a coupon, excuse me, for free. So I got it for 9 bucks. Really great. It's um, The only thing I would say is if you're expecting a lot of action in terms of like uh, Wasteland or Divinity where there's like a fight every few minutes, this isn't that. You can actually talk your way out of every single battle. You don't really have to battle, or you can find something to like shoot or hit 
in the in the arena that you're in or whatever the area you're in and you'll maybe change the flow of something and like kill someone there it's very dialogue driven it's written almost like a book so when you're reading and you talk to people like when you're reading the the lines of text it's written so descriptively it'll be like um a young man with uh dirty hair is standing there shaking to himself as he mumbles and then you know then it'll say his line of dialogue and then and it keeps doing that so there's tons and tons of dialogue if you're not into like reading and like reading bothers you in video games i wouldn't bother but if you like games like wasteland or fallout one or two or the old school strategy rpgs with a lot of dialogue and like dense dense um like a dense world to understand and get into and it's a really strange dark world with lots of like dark stuff happening around you and like unexplained things then i would check it out um it's just gonna keep dropping in price i think this was a kickstarted game just like wasteland 2 and these don't seem to do as well on console as they do on pc so i would check it out if, if any of this sounds interesting to you but again it's very dense and it's got a lot of like intriguing weirdness to it very strange but really good from what I played so far. I got so into it that I threw a movie on afterwards and I was like, I still want to play this. So I went on my computer because uh, you have to have like Windows 10 or whatever. And I streamed the Xbox to my computer and kept playing. And uh, it's just really good. And I'm trying to think of what else here I wanted to talk about. I feel like there was one more thing. Oh, I've also been playing. Um, I took a little break on Has Been Heroes recently, um, but I've been playing. Uh, Binding of Isaac again. I think because I played Has Been Heroes and I really like that roguelike type of thing, even though I find Has Been Heroes to be a little too hard. Uh, I went back and played Binding of Isaac at my father-in-law's house recently because he bought an Xbox and we all log into it and use our games on his Xbox when we're over. And uh, I had some a little 30 minutes or whatever to kill. And I beat the game again and I was like, I got to keep playing this. So I've been playing that too in my like kind of short spurts. And uh, that, that game is still my favorite roguelike game. It's uh, just really fun. You know, it's got its difficulty spikes and its randomness to where if you don't find the items you need to find to kind of make yourself stronger, you're kind of up shit's creek. But overall, I really love Binding of Isaac. And if I owned a Switch, I would probably just buy it to have the physical edition because I love the game that much. Um, Beth is talking about making me a cross-stitch pattern for, the, for a frame on the wall with, like, one of the characters. So... That's pretty much what I've been playing and buying and uh, everything. Mainly Binding of Isaac, Torment, and uh, Terraria, and Divinity with my friend Eric. So, um, yeah, that's the gist of it. Thanks, guys, for watching. Hope you like some of the stuff I picked up. Let me know if you've played any of these or if you are going to pick up any of these yourself or if they sound interesting. It's Vampire Mike from Sega CD Universe. Be good. And here you guys thought you got rid of me so quickly. 13 minutes. I forgot to mention... Divinity Original Sin Enhanced Edition. This isn't something I picked up recently, but it is something I started really playing recently. So, as I said earlier, if you like games like Fallout 1 and 2, Torment, um, Wasteland, things like that, you'll probably like Divinity Original Sin. It's similar to Torment, but not as long-winded, and also has more action. So, the cool thing about this game is it really harkens back to the old-fashioned you know, uh, strategy RPGs on the PC. As I said, those don't usually sell as well on the consoles, but I've been playing this. I played a little, little bit of it by myself, and then I played it online, and I've been playing it online with my buddy Eric Hesh. He, um, he picked it up. He found it in Target for like 15 bucks. I think it's like 20 bucks at GameStop, so the price isn't bad, and it's got co-op online and local, and it's great to see that in a strategy RPG because when you're playing with friends, you know, it adds this element or friend. When you're playing with friend, it adds this element of you actually working on something together and going through the story or doing missions. But you can also go separate and you can do a mission and he can do a mission and you both can complete them by yourselves. It would obviously be much harder because you don't have someone backing you up or teammates, but you can. You can also disagree on things in the game and play rock, paper, scissors um, to see whose solution is the one you go with. So we've had a couple of those, but not really. For the most part, we just have dialogue, and then we'll end up kind of um, 
being pleasant with each other and moving on, but you can do that with options in the game where you can disagree. It's really cool to just see a co-op online game like this for a strategy game because, you know, you tend to play these like Fallout 2 type games and you feel very kind of lonely and when you get group members you start getting sort of relationships or friendships with them in the game and at least makes you feel like you have someone as long as they have some sort of personality. But since my buddy is playing as my second character, it's just really cool. So again, um, if you like these types of games, I would definitely recommend Divinity Original Sin Enhanced Edition and Torment, though, as I said, Torment is way more text heavy uh, and less action oriented than Divinity. Thanks, guys, for watching again. It's Vampire Mike from Sega CD Universe. I promise not to come back another time. Be good.